A surprising loss comes from Maryland basketball. You are Locked On Turks, your daily podcast on the Maryland Turks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everyone? I'm Trey Moore, video content creator for 247 Sports and InsideMarylandSports.com and host of Locked On Terps, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So thank you for making us part of your day. And today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. So huge news comes out today in the Maryland basketball community as freshmen small forward wing type of player, Jamie Kaiser has entered the portal for Maryland basketball, and it looks like he will be gone and will head somewhere else next year. There's been multiple reports over the day today that Jamie Kaiser has entered the portal. I've seen it all over my Twitter timeline, and I thought it was a perfect thing to start with. This is a pretty big deal and it sounds like it was a decision made not only by him but also his family so definitely it wasn't just his decision but it sounded like his family also had some type of say in in this decision which makes a lot of sense when you make a decision like this you definitely want to incorporate what your family thinks what your mom what your dad whoever is whoever takes care of you whoever loves you you want to incorporate of course what they think they only want the best for you But this is really interesting for Maryland fans. This was unexpected from me, I think, from everyone. I don't think anybody thought that Jamie Kaiser would have entered the portal. I expected Lamothe to enter. I expected Noah Batchelor to enter. I expected Caleb Swan Rogers to probably enter. But for Jamie Kaiser to enter, I said it on here, and I was wrong, so I have to admit I was wrong. I said I don't think you have to worry about the freshmen at all in terms of the two, Deshaun Harris-Smith and Jamie Kaiser. I thought you didn't have to worry about those two. I thought those guys were locked in. I thought they were a big part of what the future holds for Maryland basketball, but it looks like Jamie Kaiser will end up somewhere else. So it was totally unexpected. I expected him to come back and be part of our future plans. I said a lot of a lot of times last year that Kaiser and Deshaun Harris Smith are the future of the program. How good they are might determine how good we are. But a lot has changed over these last couple of days with some of the people that we have picked up, some of the bodies that we have gotten, some of the high level players that Maryland basketball has received and Jamie Kaiser it just didn't really it didn't really come together last year for him as a freshman definitely had an up and down year a mostly down year for sure he just couldn't find any consistency but it wasn't just him the whole team was inconsistent so I don't want to act like oh we were like a great team and it was just Kaiser who couldn't find um consistency it was the whole entire team that couldn't find consistency besides really Jameer Young but besides that Name a player, they were inconsistent. I don't care if it was Julian Reese. I don't care if it was Dante Scott. I don't care if it was Deshaun. I don't care who you want to name on the team. They were pretty inconsistent if they were on the Maryland basketball team. Everyone not named Jameer Young. So it's not like everyone else was playing well and he was inconsistent, but he still did struggle a lot. He couldn't really get a lot going. I think it was like his kind of, there's kind of different things holding him back. His shooting for one, because He shot 26.5% from the three, but the thing about Kaiser was he was supposed to be an elite shooter, and I think he is a really good shooter. I just don't think he shot very well. Wherever he goes next year, I bet that percentage goes way up into probably, I would say, you probably would look at a guy that's shooting in the mid to low 30% next year, I would think. He's supposed to be a really good shooter. He could could have been one of our better shooters this year. He had the great stroke. You could tell he could definitely shoot the ball, the right mechanics and all that type of stuff. It just wasn't going in as much as he thought it would. And he only averaged 4.4 points per game. In some games, he was playing a lot of minutes, and he's only 26% from the field. So he's mainly a three-point shooter, couldn't really do – There wasn't much else in his game besides three-point shooting, and I think a part of that was he was already not the best athlete and not the most athletic kid out there and not 
didn't have the best foot speed. So it made it hard for him to get to the rim, get to other shots. He was a big body, but he had hard getting by big 10 type of guys. And he's more of a just catch and shoot guy at the big 10 level, rather than a guy that can create shots for himself. He's not much of of a creator. And so that kind of limits what you can do with him on the court. And I think you got to run a lot of sets for a guy like that. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. That's just how my eye tests, how I kind of saw it with him. But I think you could say that it made sense for him to hit the portal. Because if you look at the guys, I, I touched on this for a second, but if you look at the guys that are coming in next year that we have got in the portal over these last couple of days and or last couple of weeks with Gillespie and Rodney Rice, you look at Gillespie, he still has three years of eligibility and Gillespie will probably be our starting point guard next year. And Jamie Kaiser is more of a three, but still that kind of still affects how you kind of the rotation goes. So Gillespie has three years of eligibility remaining, and he's going to be one of the better point guards in the big 10. He was number one point guard in the transfer portal to a lot of people. So you think that's, that's a guy that's going to start. So you think Gillespie is going to start number one portal point guard right now. Yeah. He's going to be a starter for Maryland basketball. And then you bring in Rodney Rice, who a lot of people are really high on, including me, who I think is going to be a really high level player. He kind of fits the same mold as Jamie Kaiser in terms of he's kind of that two kind of guard and Kaiser. Yeah. Maybe Kaiser is a little bit bigger and more of a three, but still I would expect Kaiser to start. And then Deshaun Harris Smith also to start. I kind of think that's our three starting guard kind of wing shooting guard small four point guard like those are our three one two three right there for next year for Maryland basketball so you look at Kaiser he was probably a guy that expected ex an expanded role going into next year and he might have been even promised an expanded role but now it's like you guys have Rodney Rice for three more years and you have Gillespie for three more years and then Deshaun Harris Smith for three more years it's like where do I kind of fit into this? How am I going to come off the bench again? Is it going to be inconsistent minutes? Am I not going to be able to get rhythm again? I think it made sense for him to go somewhere else because of some of those things. I could see him next year looking a lot like the same type of minutes he's getting this year with the guys that we brought in because I think Gillespie is going to be really good. And I think Rodney Rice is also going to be really good. And then on top of that, there was talks about Maryland basketball adding another three, another small forward into from the transfer portal and so that would have hurt him too so if you look at how this roster is made up now I think it made sense for him to leave and to go somewhere else and I just think there's a lot of kind of talent on this team now where it kind of blocks him from playing at all and I do want to say this he improved a lot down the stretch for Maryland basketball and it's kind of hard for me to get a grasp yet how I feel about this. You can't really get a grasp, in my opinion, how exactly big of a loss it is until you see what Maryland does with the spots they add. I do think Kaiser is going to be a big part of our rotation next year. I think he could have been like a sixth man for us and really done some good things if he improved over the summer. But now you're looking at him and he's gone and you got to replace him. And it's like if you replace him with the star and a really top end player, you're looking at it and it's like, oh, dang, like then that the, the loss of Jamie Kaiser isn't that big of a deal. But if you don't really replace him with much talent and you replace her with someone lesser talent and someone who doesn't might might not have as bright of a future that didn't show quite the flashes that Kaiser showed at the end and he did show some flashes shooting the ball at times some games he would shoot the ball well but if you add someone that doesn't quite have that same flash that same talent level you could look at it and be like it was a bad loss for Maryland basketball I think it all depends on who you add but I think you have to add a three guard in that spot I don't think you can not add someone that is a three next year. So I do think it made sense for him to leave because I do think that his role would have been about the same, but the guys that we brought in and maybe it even could have decreased. You also look at freshman Malachi Palmer plays about the same position as Kaiser. What type of player is he? Is he a top end player? Is he a guy that's going to play next year? Is he a guy that will get minutes? I really don't know with Malachi Palmer. He looks like he has a pretty solid game overall, and he looks like he can do a lot of things well, but we'll see. I think it's just like it made sense after last year for maybe him, for maybe that this Maryland wasn't the right fit, and it looks like Maryland's taking a whole new kind of team going into next year with some of the same pieces. Of course, you still have Julian Reese, and you still have Deshaun Harris-Smith, 
But a lot of this team is going to be a new team. It's going to be a lot different going into next year. There's going to be a lot of different new pieces. We really blew things up a little bit. I mean, you can't say that exactly the coaching staff blew it up, but it kind of got blown up a little bit. I don't know if they, like, tell anyone that it's like you should probably hit the portal, but this thing has blown up, and it's going to look completely different. And I'm not going to lie. I don't think that's a bad thing. But Jamie Kaiser has entered the portal. It's going to be interesting to see what type of school he ends up. At. I don't know if he ends up at like a at another school that's like a Big Ten, like an SEC, like an ACC. I don't know if he put on a good enough freshman year to kind of show that. But at the same time, I know Indiana wanted him out of high school. I know Virginia did. I but I'm unsure of kind of where he ends up. I, 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 it'll be interesting with Kaiser. I don't know if he can end up somewhere a little bit smaller and take on a really big role or some bigger and maybe have to fight his way up to the top a little bit. We'll see, but he will probably not be on Maryland basketball team next year, but definitely an unexpected loss for Maryland basketball. Talia Tunga Viola reportedly struggles at his pro day. I will tell you about that in my thoughts after this ad from the Game Time app. Have you ever wanted to go to a game at the last minute, like a Maryland Terrapins game, but finding tickets is hard? I have been there before. Buying tickets to your favorite event shouldn't be stressful. I know you guys have been in a situation where it's a last minute and you and your friends are together and you want to find tickets, but Game Time is a fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports music, comedy, and theater near you. It's not just sports. I know some of you guys like some other stuff besides sports, even though a lot of the times we talk about sports. But with killer deals on last-minute tickets and their best price guaranteed, you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun you'll have. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event and even an hour after it starts. It's a place to find last-minute seats and take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked on College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code Locked on College for twenty dollars off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. So Maryland had its pro day on a couple of days ago, and there were reports that Talia Tunga Viola really struggled at Maryland's pro. Day, and it looks like his draft stock could have just taken a huge hit. There was a report that Maryland at Talia at Maryland's Pro Day did not look good. It was a report that he reportedly really struggled throwing the ball. And I'm not going to say a lot of it made sense of the report, but what the guy was kind of saying was kind of my concern with what Talia is overall as a player in terms of his potential and his overall how he looks at how we look at him for the next level and how NFL teams will look at Talia going into next year and it's just like I'm not very surprised with the things that they were saying but basically the report said that he showed little arm talent and his deep passes showed little speed and his passes kind of fluttered and even though I hate this report I'm not going to lie, it does make a little bit of sense for an NFL scout to walk away and say those type of things about Talia Tunga Viola. The NFL in college is just different. In terms of the quarterback position, it's different. You can be successful and get away with stuff in college that you'll never, ever be able to get away from, get away with in the NFL. A lot of it's just talent, pure base talent. Sometimes you need a cannon of an arm to make a certain throw to hit it out with how tight some of these coverages are. And to be honest, Talia doesn't have the biggest arm. I mean, I don't think that's a crazy take for me to say. He doesn't have a big arm. He doesn't have the strongest arm. I always like to say I thought he was a really accurate quarterback, so I thought that would go far away, far uh, far for him, and I thought that would help him a lot. But He's not the most accurate quarter. I mean, he's not. The, he doesn't have the hardest arm. He is pretty accurate, I thought. He doesn't have the most arm strength. And apparently that showed at Maryland's pro day, as I said. The reports said that he showed little arm talent and his deep passes showed little speed and his passes fluttered. And 
they kind of make sense because we've seen film. We've seen it for a couple of years now. He doesn't have a cannon of an arm. He's only 5'10". He's small. He's not that thick. And so you look at his NFL potential and it's like they don't like guys like that. They like guys with high ceilings, but, oh, they might have to clean up the accuracy a little bit. They like those type of players rather than someone, oh, he's 5'10 and he's accurate, but he's not going to be able to make every throw on the football field. That's not what NFL guys get excited about. They get excited about these high-end guys like the Josh Allens, for example, who come in as projects maybe, and a lot of people think they're not going to be good players, but they have all the talent in the world. They have all the arm strength in the world to make things happen and to be able to let the ball loose. And so when they see a guy like this, Talia, who's projected to go later in the draft, and you already know the concerns, his arm strength, blah, 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 when you go into that setting and in the NFL scouts, they already know that. But then you look at it and it really shows up on a pro day. That's concerning. That's going to that's going to tank your draft stock. They don't love guys like that. I do think there is a time or place to draft a guy like that when you're looking for a backup, when you're looking at a guy that maybe doesn't have the highest ceiling, but has a really high floor. But at the same time, you look at Talia and he turned over the ball a lot. He he definitely turned over the ball at times at Maryland. There have been times that where it's like, okay, maybe you can't blame it all on him, but it's like he'll have multiple turnovers in a day, and it's like that costs us the game. And it, and he's a guy that it's like, can you look at him as a high floor guy while also being having a lower ceiling, but being a high floor guy, a guy that can be a backup that can maybe give you a couple of series or a, or a game or a couple of games if you need him to be a backup quarterback. Can you look at Talia like that? I don't know, and I don't think the pro day – helps look at him as him being able to make NFL type of throws at the end of the day. I'm telling you, to make some of those throws that NFL quarterbacks have to make on a consistent basis, you have to have some type of arm strength, some type of arm talent, or you can't get to some parts on the field that make it so hard to be able to get into this uh, an elite level or even a good or even a solid type of NFL offense when your quarterback is so limited. That's when you look that's why when you look at all the top quarterbacks, they have elite type of talent. And the thing is, Talia is not supposed to be a Patrick Mahomes or a Josh Allen or a Lamar Jackson. That's not what he is. But it's just like, do you, as a scout, do you think he has a high enough floor with some of the turnover issues, with being small? Does he have a high enough floor for us to make him a backup quarterback? That's the question. And that's what I think that a bad pro day in terms of arm talent was kind of expected, but it certainly doesn't help the draft stock. I'm curious where they're going to put him at. I don't know if he gets drafted now. This could have really hurt his draft status if this report was completely true. Obviously, I haven't seen like a ton of reports about it, but I have seen it on my Twitter. I did look at the article about it, and it did state all of these things. And so it's like if all these things are true, if he really did struggle, I don't know if Talia is getting drafted, to be honest. He already didn't go to the combine, and he didn't get invited to the combine. And then he also – only threw out Maryland's pro day. And it's like, I don't know if they're going to be impressed with that of Talia. It's hard. You can go back and forth and say that arm strength isn't everything, but I think it's, it's a pretty big deal when it's like noticeably weak. And his brother too is obviously a starter, but he struggles with some of the same things. A lot of people joke about with Tua that he doesn't have the strongest arm or whatever, but it's like you don't want to be playing dink and dunk offense, even when your backup quarterback is, and you do want someone that can take care of the ball. But Talia hasn't shown the ability to do that. He has shown the ability to make a lot of plays, high-level plays, but if they don't think those throws are going to be able to translate to the NFL, they're not going to take him. And he also decided not to test at Maryland's Pro Day, which there was a reason he probably wasn't going to run the fastest time or or have the best any time or the lift the most weights or whatever it is that they test. But that still does hurt because teams are going to look at him and be like, you didn't test. You didn't run a 40 time. We don't really it's not it's not really someone we probably want on our team or someone that we want to take a chance at. We saw a guy that didn't throw the ball very hard. He also didn't test. I don't know if we want this guy, even with how much he contributed at Maryland. Maryland basketball's. 2023 class is almost already all done. The star-studded class is already almost 
all out of there. I will tell you about the 2023 class and my thoughts on it. That was supposed to be a really good class. I will tell you about that after this ad from Amazon Fire TV. Fire TV is your destination for sports. From live games to highlights to in-depth analysis, Fire TV offers amazing viewing experience with smart TVs as well as a Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels let you dive into all the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on the latest world of sports. March Madness, M- NBA, MLB, and lots more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit www.amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV. So Maryland's 2023 class, only two guys remain out of the four. If you guys don't remember, this class was supposed to be like the next big thing from Maryland basketball, it was three guys from the DMB area. And then a lot of people forget about Braden Pierce, which I'm also going to talk about. But it was three guys from the DMV area that were all supposed to be high-end four-star type of players. Deshaun Harris-Smith was supposed to be a blue-chip prospect in his freshman year. Definitely didn't go as planned. Definitely didn't look the way we wanted it to look. But they did show flashes at the end of the year. He did improve a lot throughout the year. And I think he still has a chance to be a really good player going into next year. And I think he'll be playing next to really good players as well with Jacoby Gillespie and Rodney Rice next year. And I think that will help. And I think Maryland will be constructed better going into next year. But the other two four stars that were supposed to be pretty good players for us, Kaiser and Jonathan Lamothe, are both in the portal. So this 2023 class absolutely went wrong it went pretty wrong it went pretty bad and we're looking at it as two of the three guys that were supposed to be high end in the future of maryland basketball are all now gone and it's pretty interesting to look at it at this way but i think it failed the 2023 recruiting class i think it has officially failed alice Deshaun harris smith comes out and comes out and is like an awesome all big 10 player which I'm not saying he's going to be that, but I'm not saying he's not going to be that as well. But this 2023 class is just kind of in the dumps. It's like there's not much remaining of it, and there's not much else to go on it. And it's like we lost two guys that I think in Jonathan Lamothe and Jamie Kaiser that I honestly 100% being honest, I thought they were going to be better, and I think Kevin Willard thought they would be better than they actually were. I don't think they – I don't think they were as good as their rating suggested. I don't think they were four-star type of players. And I think when you watch the games, when Lamoth played, he just didn't look confident. He didn't look like he was ready to play. I don't know if he could have used a red shirt season. He just didn't look ready. There were times in the season where he got a shot to play. There were times where I wanted him to play, and I, I advocated for him playing. But when he was out there, I couldn't really be like, yeah, he should be playing because it didn't look right. But when he was on the bench at times, I was like, wait, well, everything's been bad. Like, we might as well try him. But when he was in the game, I was like, it doesn't look right. His shot didn't look like he was confident in it. He didn't look like he was going to be able to get away with the same stuff he did in high school. And same with Kaiser, a guy that's supposed to be an elite shooter for us, come in and shoot the ball really well. I think a lot of the stuff that concerned us about Kaiser showed that he had a lack of creativity because of his lack of athleticism. And he shot the ball really poorly, and it really hurt Maryland basketball, even though he showed improvement. And they were just freshmen. None of the freshmen in the Big Ten were, were that good. It was a pretty bad year. Like, Deshaun Harris-Smith made the all-freshman team, and he didn't have a good year. And so we're looking at it, and we lost two of those guys in the portal. I would have loved for them to come back. It does open up spots for Kevin Willard. We'll see what he does with now two open scholarships instead of one. But it definitely did hurt the Terps that – that this 2023 class didn't pan out the way it was supposed to. These guys were supposed to be borderline starters next year. I thought Kaiser was supposed to be a starter for us next year. I'll be interesting to see where they go, but it's interesting that this class of 2023 Maryland basketball was supposed to be like Kevin Willard gets three DMV guys is almost done. But Braden Pierce, 
who did redshirt last year for Maryland basketball, the center, who I am really high on. I think he's a better player than he is, than people think. He's going to have a chance to play next year, I think, in some backup minutes. We'll see how the type of player he is. I think he's a pretty good player. He showed it, and he has, and he doesn't have the most experience, but I will, he showed it in high school. I would like to see the type of player he is, but you don't want to forget about him. Maybe he can save this class. Maybe him and Deshaun can save this class, and maybe we can be looking at this class as better than what – we thought it was at this moment. But that's all we have for today. Thank you for listening to Locked on Terps. Make sure you like and subscribe. We're here every day talking Maryland football and basketball. So thank you for listening to Locked on Terps.